Good evening, Honorable McIsaac, Trustee Nicholson, Miss Hall, platform guests, administration and staff, parents, guardians, families, friends, and graduating class of 2013. It is most excellent that you have come out to support us all on this magnificent day. My name is Jordan Holden, and I cannot even begin to express my honor and thanks at being the valedictorian for the graduating class of 2013. And to be honest, I still can't believe that my peers actually trust me to stand up here and say whatever my heart desires. <laughs> but fear not, I have Miss Clark and Mr. Bird to help me out. So odds are you won't hear anything too ridiculous tonight. Uh, to my fellow graduates, I can't merely say, well done. The last 12 years have been one of the biggest battles of our entire lives, and it has finally come to an end. All of the hard work, dedication, and determination have finally paid off. How can you capture all that by saying two simple words? It is impossible. For the purpose of tonight, I have created a new word. A new word that I feel captures all of the emotions that we have felt over the last 12 years and just lets them explode out all at once. Uh, this word is abumsa damirkosis. <laughs> okay, now I know what you're thinking. That word makes no sense. How does that represent everything that we've gone through these last few years? Well, if I may direct your attention to the first part of that word, a bloom. What could the word bloom possibly mean? Well, it means growing into something new. And I think it's safe to say that everyone has done a lot of blooming, if you will, both physically and mentally. I still remember my first day of grade one. I was all ready to go. I was ready to leave my house and forge my own way in this world. Well, that's what I thought the night before, at least. But the second my mom dropped me off, left me outside the iron gates that were the doors to Glenn Stewart, and said, I'll see you at 2.30, Jordo. I just lost it. <laughs> All of a sudden, I felt a single tear roll down my cheek, and then the storm came. At that moment, I realized I was not ready to be on my own. But now, I think I'm ready, or almost ready at least. I've bloomed. We've all grown in that sense. The last few years, we've all wanted more and more independence, and now we're finally about to get it. So that's the reason behind the first part of that word. The next part is Saturday. I feel the sap, you know, represents the kind of, you know, okay times, times where, you know, nothing crazy or exciting is really happening. We don't really have an opinion on anything because, let's be honest, life is full of those moments. And then there's day. This is kind of like day, as in all of the really exciting moments that you can't even believe you were lucky enough to experience. Moments like midnight bridge jumping with your friends or sand dune diving at the beach represent all of the things that make you happy and excited when you think about them. The last part of the word is kosis, and kosis doesn't... You know, wait, kosis does mean something. Kosis is whatever you want it to mean. It's a blank slate left for you to inscribe whatever you feel is necessary. Well, I guess that's the meaning behind the word. So to you all, I say, I'm sad that we kosis, and believe me, each and every one of you deserve it. Now, I still can't believe we're all here graduating today. It almost feels like I'm in shock. Like I just crashed into the ditch with my sister's car. <laughs> I'm still not fully aware of what actually happened. But I did crash that car. The same way we're all sitting in this hall, getting mentally prepared for the walk into the future that is graduation. And I know, that's a pretty nice metaphor. See, Ms. Briggs, I didn't pay attention in English class. Okay, so, right now, about to graduate. And I know there are some graduates out there thinking, man, you know, I made it up here on my own steam. I'm a lone wolf, and ain't nobody gonna tell me what to 
you. And although I may not know your own story, I can guarantee you that there must have been someone in your life at some time who helped you out. Because it is impossible to get to school if you don't have anyone. I've been helped by more people more times than I could possibly hope to count. And if I could stand up here and individually thank every one of them, I probably wouldn't. But that, and that, is only because it would take days and days to thank everyone. But I'm going to do my best to thank as many people as possible. So first off, I'd like to thank the teachers. Now I know everyone complains about teachers sometimes, that they don't just like their students, or, you know, they pick on certain people. And, you know, in some cases, I'm sure they have a very good reason. But, in all cases, your teachers are there to help you. And they aren't just, they aren't just there to help you with your schoolwork either. Teachers can be people to talk to when you're feeling down. And they can even be your friends. Now I have a few teachers I plan on visiting next year, you know, cracking a few root beers with and watching Sports Center on Saturday nights. And for that reason, every teacher in the world has my thanks. Now it's time to thank not only my friends, but every friend out there. For in all honesty, there is probably no one who knows you better than your best friend. Not even your parents. I mean, think about it. You don't tell your parents half the things you do with your best friends. And friends are people who share most of the great memories in your life. People with whom you learn the hardest lessons. How else would you know that there's a limit to how high you can climb a tree? Or that you probably shouldn't yell insults at bikers when you're driving by? You can't, unless you go out there and experience it. And for that reason, I thank all the friends who have ever existed. Now on to the parents. Where to begin? Well, parents are some of the first people you get to know after you're born. They're left. But it's true. It's true. And they're left with the daunting task of trying to teach their children the difference between right and wrong, as well as preparing them for the day when they finally leave home. And parents, they also take it upon themselves to teach us as many life lessons as humanly possible. And I have my parents to thank for teaching me about fire and how it is something you probably shouldn't touch. All the way to things like looking both ways before you cross the road. Parents are there when you fall down and cut your knee. They're there when you crash a car into a ditch. <laughs> and they are there for all the bad times, all of the good times. And for that reason, I thank the parents. Now there's one more person out there whom I think everyone in this room has to thank. And that person is yourself. Because even though you had all these people helping you out, the only thing it comes down to in the end is the effort you put in. And for that reason, I think we should have a round of applause. For me, these last few years have gone by with the same speed that gazelle chases a butterfly. And that is very fast.